Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Natasha Phipps and we're gonna be talking about investing in another market that you don't live in. I'm so excited that Natasha's here to share her knowledge with us. Before we get into it with Natasha, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's do this. Natasha, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to join me. Uh, before we get into it, uh, why don't you give everyone a bit of an intro on who you are and what you do uh, in the real estate investing space? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, by the way. Excited to be here. Um, so I began as a real estate investor pretty young. I uh, bought my first property before I was 20 and kind of accidentally started investing in real estate. Um, and within a few years of that, I was kind of making more money just buying and selling real estate and moving around than I was working in my full-time job in the oil and gas industry at the time. So by the time I got out of um, university, I went straight into real estate and wanted to be an investment specialist realtor focused entirely on using real estate to help people make money, right? To um, build wealth. And at the time, it was so hard to find information. And I was almost kind of ticked off when I learned what I didn't know back then, right? Um, so I really make it my mission now here in Calgary. We have a team here um, and we're all investment specialist realtors to just do everything we can to empower people with the knowledge and the information and the opportunities here in Calgary to hit those hit those dreams and uh, goals that they have. No matter if they're a first time home buyer or like a full time real estate investor, having that lens when you're buying real estate is so, so helpful. So yeah. um, explain why you think this is, is as a barrier for many people and why they tend to lean towards investing in their backyard versus investing, um, you know, where returns might be better. Yeah. Letting go of that is tough, right? Um, <laughs> wanting to be able to drive by or touch it, see it, feel it is tough. Um, but the market has dictated kind of where people can afford to buy. And if you're using fundamentals um, in real estate investing, so you've done the education, you've read the books, you're, you're, you're clear on what strategy you want to implement, it may very well be that your own backyard is not the best market to implement that strategy. And so um, I'm just a big believer in taking it back to the fundamentals with people and then dealing with whatever those roadblocks are. Usually it's fear, right? We're scared of, oh, wait, what if we don't have the right team? Or what if um, uh, something happens, they need to jump on a plane? Like, but even the worst case scenario is not that bad, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you need to jump on a plane right now, that's a little difficult. But even if you had to, it's really not the end of the world either. Um, and what we're so blessed with right now in the world is how easy it is to build the team number one, but also connect with other investors, like platforms just like this. I mean, how incredible is it to find this network of people in the world now who are doing what you're doing? So the biggest roadblock for sure is just that fear of, the unknown, um, but there's huge benefits to, again, treating it like a business, getting back to the fundamentals and taking the emotions out of it. So that's what our job really is, um, is to try to take those emotions out of it. And let's look at strategy and fundamentals. Yeah, I like you mentioned fundamentals right away. And it's something that yeah. I think is is a key to success in real estate investing. So yeah. what do you say to people that, that have that hang up? And that's a very real thing. And like, for long-term buy and hold investing, which that's what most of our buyers looking at our market right now are, it, it has to cash flow. It should cash flow in my opinion. <laughs> um, and so if after hiring a, a property management company, this property doesn't cash flow anymore, then that's a problem. Um, if we're talking about, you know, buy and hold real estate, like that's not what we're trying to accomplish here typically. Yeah. So if it doesn't cash flow in your own uh, backyard or just that, you know, property type or whatever it is, that opportunity, then I would say that opportunity is not right. Um, and so that's a huge benefit to Alberta right now is you absolutely can cash flow um, with a property manager and, you know, 20% down, the numbers can absolutely work if you're looking at the right type of thing. So what is, what is the, the strategy that you're employing that's seeing the most amount of traction? Because you talked about two things, strategy and fundamentals. Yeah. So if it's strategy, what is the strategy that you're seeing that's really working well for investors in Alberta right now? In the worst and the best times here, um, suited properties have always done well here. Um, the, the numbers have always made sense, whether you are buying something brand new or you know buying something older and fixing it up. I love secondary suites. Uh, duplexes or uh, fourplexes, like kind of the, the smaller multi-units have always done very well here as well. 
And that's how you usually get the cash flow um, numbers that you're trying to achieve. When you're looking to set a condo or um, a, a single family house, it's very challenging to make those numbers work. And then it's, I mean, it's nice to have two streams of income coming in on one property. If you have one vacant, at least you have something coming in, right? So that gives a bit of security for um, people here in Calgary, particular um, in, in particular secondary suites are kind of on a shortage. So we are going through a bunch of changes when it comes to the rules and legislation around suites. And so for the last several years, um, they've been appreciating very well. They rent very well. We have the best cash flow numbers we can provide. And you get good tenants in the suburbs just with you know legally suited uh, properties and they just perform uh, super well. So that's been the main um, property type this, that especially the out of province investors have been looking for is like turnkey legal, you know, they're not looking for a renovation usually from out of province that can be challenging. So, um, yeah, we, um, have been designing our products around that type of investor because there is just so many investors from out of Alberta that are parking their money here, looking for that, uh, cash flow. And what are the benefits uh, for those people that are not familiar with the Alberta market? Uh, there are some distinct things that are definitely beneficial. What are those things for, for, uh, yeah. for Alberta investors? Yeah, I mean, number one in recent years is price point. Um, uh, it's just so many people are priced out of their market. Uh, and I'm seeing now like first time home buyers, like young, uh, young people just cannot buy anything at all. So they're going straight into investing in real estate and buying rental property outside of their own backyard, which is really cool. And I, I love working with those, those buyers so much. I'm so proud of that uh, generation um, when I, I get to work with that um, age group. But also things like our landlord and tenancy laws are very, very different here. And in recent years, well, in the last year, I mean, we've all kind of been tested with uh, how good of a landlord we are in the last year. And um, the tenancy laws here are a lot more fair compared to British Columbia and Ontario in terms of protecting your asset. So that's a huge one. Um, you can get, you can evict much easier here. You can raise your rent once per year as much as you like. Um, and uh, the other thing that's quite nice is just there's no land transfer tax or HST, particularly when you're buying new construction. So you're, again, your money goes further. It helps push the push the funds further, right? So price points and landlord laws and taxes are the top three ones usually. Mm -hmm. So for investors that are that are out of province, um, you know, how do you advise your clients in, in choosing a property? Um, mm -hmm. Is that something where you're sending them listings, you're shortlisting? Um, yeah. Are you are you saying to them, you know, stay where you are? Or are you encouraging them to actually come out and and, and visit the areas and, and check out the properties? 90% of our buyers do not actually come and check it out, I would say. They um, are definitely relying heavily on us to, to you know, I mean, we, we do video tours and I've even taken people with my car and driving around and showing them the area, right? Um, but it comes down to, again, going to the fundamentals. Usually we're looking for an area that has some sort of upside coming to it and growth. And so we're doing all that market research for them, kind of handing in them everything on a platter as best we can. And then either we're doing purpose-built new construction or we're hand-picking things from the MLS um, or, or pocket listings that we think would work well for this uh, particular buyer. Um, but we, yeah, we, we really do it all from start to finish and have the entire team built. Um, but my favorite thing to tell investors too is to talk to other investors. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's hundreds of investors investing in um, uh, out, outside of their own backyard, no matter where they are, even if they're in investing in Vancouver from Toronto or Calgary to, you know, Moncton or whatever it is, like find these people and talk to them because they will tell you how their investments are performing for sure. How do you advise people when it comes to, you know, property management, tenant management? Um, is that a system that you help them set up or you just, yeah. you know, um, that you really point them in the right direction and then say, you know, here are some preferred vendors that we, that we work with, or what is the system that you, you know, um, you, you, it, it, that you basically um, recommend to your clients? Yeah. Property management is the biggest component, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's the thing that's the most scary for people for sure. So the brokerage that I um, am a realtor at has a property management division and they do an excellent job. And that is the reason I am there is because I can be a realtor really anywhere, but I can't be a um, a realtor in that has an in-house property management division. There's not that many companies here that uh, do that. And so 
this group um, has really tailored their services and have done an excellent job of supporting our clients from out of province, knowing that um, entirely. So they are really good at keeping people informed um, and are on top of it. They have the, you know, the, uh, the portal online, you can access all your documents and, and um, information there. But uh, ultimately it comes down to the, the support the clients feel that they have. And they have a whole team of people here on the ground to help them when things don't go quite right. You know, a really good example is warranty items, like say a dishwasher stops working or something like that, right? Like they're doing everything from start to finish for you, um, warranty walkthroughs with the builder, handling every tenant communication possible. So just keeping you updated as much as you like. So are you seeing more people going into uh, new build construction or, or infill projects uh, versus the, the renovation and um, the conversions uh, in, yeah. in Calgary? So the weird thing about Calgary is up until a few years ago, there was really no purpose built um, new construction on terms of the um, suited properties that didn't exist here prior to a few years back. So it's been like exciting news here. <laughs> it's been a big deal that you could buy something kind of off the shelf that's that's legal and uh, purpose built. So we have done a lot of those purely because it was such a, a need in the market. Um, we're about half and half, I would say, between people wanting to renovate, employ the burst burr strategy or that are just want easy done for them they, they're, they're not going to be here or even if they're here and they just don't want to kind of go down that road so we do about half and half um and the new construction stuff is um it's filling that need of what our market really needs on the rental side because mm -hmm. legal suites are in very short supply we only have around five thousand for the entire city of calgary and our city is cracking down starting at the beginning of next year on the illegal ones. So we're kind of in this trying to bring supply to the market and new construction combined with the rentals is a great way to uh, do that. Do you mind if we talk a little bit about some numbers in, in your local market? And yeah, what you're kind of sure. seeing? Well, let's start with on the renovation side. Yeah. What's the average purchase of a, a, a you know, a, a bungalow that could be converted to a, to a legal uh, duplex? Yeah, you're in that for, you know, 425 to 475, depending on the community. And then um, if it has an existing suite in it right now, you can legalize it just by meeting fire code. Um, so that's not a big deal. That's not a huge renovation. So your rental costs could be maybe between like five and $15,000. Uh, so not a huge deal. Whereas if you buy a bungalow or something does not have a suite in it, you got to meet building code. Now we're in that 70, $80,000, <laughs> um, uh, reno cost. So my max kind of valuation, I tell people for the after repair value for Calgary to make the numbers cash flow, you don't want to really be exceeding that kind of five. 50 mark for something with two suites in it. The numbers just get very, very difficult at that point. So mm. if you're spending 80 grand on a reno, you need to be kind of reverse engineering and making sure your numbers are still going to work after your refi is um, complete. So that's roughly, you can get cheaper ones in the more less desirable communities for sure. But most of our clients want at least a B type of area um, or better. So are in that kind of range. Whereas new construction, easy, you know, off the shelf, you're now you're sitting around 500,000 for a legally suited um, purpose built property with a garage on it. So and what are your rents that you're seeing on a property of, of the uh, like that? Yeah, so for the new construction stuff, um, well, it, it hasn't really changed too much, whether it's new or not. Um, but like a three bedroom, you know, two and a half bath in, in the um, in the uh, purpose built ones, 1600 square feet, you're in the 18, you know, to 1900 up, and then your basement suite should be around the 1100 mark. Um, that's including utilities. So uh, around $400 utility expense. We have an issue here where we can't get two meters in these things. <laughs> so you end up usually including utilities or charging them back every month, but that should be sitting you in that cash flow, even if you're having property management in the three to 400 a month. Nice. And, and yeah. what's, what's the hang up with the separate utilities there? Why? <laughs> this, the city of Calgary just kind of throws their hands up and says, it's the land developer's job. The land developer kind of says the city won't allow us, but essentially we cannot put a second meter in, um, in these 
properties um, prior to building them. So you could go after the fact and do that, but it's now quite costly at that point. Like we're talking about usually at least $15,000. And so most people don't want to spend the money. And so you're stuck with one meter and uh, yeah, so it is a little bit of a challenge. And, 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 you know, kind of going off of that, what is, you know, if, if an investor wants to invest in a, in a foreign market and they do have to go through that renovation or that procedural uh, the procedural steps in order to be able to legalize uh, a space. Is that yeah. something that your team is helping with along the way? And you have those people in place that can guide them? Yeah, we have a, uh, a few teams of really great contractors who are investors themselves. They've done a lot of these suites. They know what they're talking about and uh, doing when it comes to the city. The permitting process is, is kind of slow and arduous, right? Um, so it is really paramount that you have that team on your side here to make sure that the permitting goes through as planned. Um, and it seems they're really like the process is always changing. <laughs> you know, it's like one week uh, you need to go about it this way. And the annoying thing with, I don't know if this is just any city, but here it's like you call the city and you get three different answers when you talk to three different people. So allowing someone to do all that legwork for you is going to take a lot off your plate. And what is the, uh, what is the timeline for a, a permit for something like this? So if you need to get a development permit, which um, I would say about half of the renovations out there, you will need to do a development permit. If you don't have the zoning, um, it's about a two to three month wait just for your development permit. Then you can go straight to building permit after that, which only takes a, a few days. It's just that development permit that's a bit slow. And you're talking new construction versus renovation then at that point? No, even for your renovation. Um, if you have a zoning that's not... Uh, residential two, like zone for two suites, you need to go um, and get a development permit. And um, yeah, unfortunately, that wait time is about two to three months. Which uh, areas of Calgary are you are you fond of right now? Um, I really love following the train line. <laughs> and this is not for just Calgary. This is kind of a like trains are just a roadmap to real estate investing, right? So yeah. um, the tr train extension lines are a very hot topic here and have been for a very long time. So in the northeast part of Calgary, um, there's a few extensions coming to the train line there. So far northeast has gone under um, a lot of change from the older parts of the northeast that is less desirable. The new parts of the Northeast are um, the fastest growing part of Calgary. The land is a bit more affordable, very good rental demand and lots of jobs and employment and activity happening. So I like to see that commercial development and transportation improvements. Um, then the other part of the city that I'm quite excited about is the Southwest um, corner of Calgary where our ring road is finally being completed, um, our, our uh, Tony Trail ring road, and that's going to finally like loop together that section of the city with the rest of the with the rest of the uh, city. So that's really exciting. Um, but more so why it's exciting, there's a four and a half billion dollar commercial development going in along that ring road on the southwest uh, portion of the city. So that just means jobs, you know, interest, people are going to want to live there, things going on. Like I like to see that kind of stuff and get in there um, prior to that um, starting. So those are my top two locations in there. It's mm -hmm. no secret that Alberta has struggled over the last few years. And um, so how do you uh, set up your investors um, in a situation like that? Or how do you reassure them where they're not seeing a huge, um, you know, growth market in terms of the values of the properties? Um, and, and then also like, how do you factor in vacancy? Cause I'm sure that, um, you know, I know that in red gear, it's hovering around 10%. Um, now having said that my properties are generally sought after because of the way that they're renovated and the kind of yeah. traffic that I go after, is it similar in your market? And is that how you sort of in, in, insulate against vacancy and, and, um, a, a little bit of market appreciation. So vacancy in Calgary is really two there's really two kind of things to talk about our downtown and inner city vacancy rate is much higher than in the suburbs even prior to covid the activity and the demand has been in these suburbs so for several years now on the outskirts of the city the vacancy is much lower like three to four percent whereas if we're talking about a downtown condo or you know something uh closer to downtown even you'll start seeing those numbers creep up so and i also like looking at as far back as possible like it, through all the peaks and valleys of our market kind of I had mentioned secondary suites have always done the best and mm -hmm. that's just the the truth of the matter 
So going where the demand is, our downtown is not as exciting as it once was. <laughs> um, and so being in the suburbs is really where the good tenants are at and where you get people sticking around for a while. So we don't have vacancy issues in the, in the suburbs with suited properties. Um, appreciation is something that I don't like to just throw my hands up in the air and say, well, Calgary is not appreciating a whole lot. There's ways to be strategic with appreciation. And um, we have seen great appreciation on our properties where we are strategic in location. So um, like I said, choosing near a upcoming train line that has always proven to bump appreciation um, time and time again. So being strategic with the location, kind of seeing what's coming in the future in the next, you know, two to 10 years, like what's happening in an area. Um, so for the Northeast, for example, our um, suite of duplexes that we've been selling up there for just over three years now have been seeing four to 5% appreciation per year in the last three years, even though Calgary was pretty flat during that time because we're being strategic with the property type and the growth in an area. Um, and Calgary's not going anywhere. Um, you know, certainly we've been beat up by the oil industry. <laughs> there's, there's, there, there's no pretending, uh, you know, that, that, that that's not the case, but we're, it's good to see now we're seeing really good diversification happening here. Um, Calgary is still the highest paid city per capita in the um, country. Um, we still have, uh, really great industries in terms of like the, you know, the medical field, even like the Calgary Cancer Center is under construction right now. That'll be a hub for all of Western Canada. And we have the consist, uh, the highest concentration of high tech workers now per capita in Calgary as well. So we're seeing some industries shift. Finally, it should have happened, you know, at least a decade ago, <laughs> but here we are. Um, and uh, yeah, Calgary's not, not going anywhere, but you do need to be strategic. You do need to pick the right type of property. What's your final piece of advice to anybody who's interested in, in, in investing out of their own backyard and investing in a market that they don't live in? The biggest mistakes I've seen people make in investing in real estate is being stuck with blinders with this. Um, you know, flipping houses in a time when you shouldn't be flipping houses. Like if you want to flip houses, go find a good market to flip houses, right? And, and it, it may very well not be your own backyard. So do the homework and the research and the education to determine, number one, what strategy you want, and then figure out what that market is doing. Is it what point in the real estate cycle is it in? And, and then you can really get very strategic with those two things, right? It's very easy to educate yourself on what makes sense in what type of market. And there is um, an incredible network of investors out there. Like in real estate investors in Canada are so helpful. <laughs> yeah. um, so use them, right? Talk to people, get out there and talk to people that are from Ontario that have invested in Alberta, if, if that's what you're doing. So that's my number one piece of advice is go talk to people, but then get, get strategic with the information that you're trying to um, uh, look at. There's economic information about every major city in Canada. It's pretty accessible to find. So go find that and uh, just do your homework and build a great network. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. Natasha, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to, uh, to join me. I, I think that um, this idea that we're, like you say, kind of stuck on as, as investors, a lot of novice investors when they first start out are saying, I have to invest in my backyard. I like yeah. the idea of getting outside and looking at the markets that have really good fundamentals. And I think Calgary is definitely one of those markets. So thanks for, for walking us through the strategies that you use and your team and how you can benefit your investors. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the session with Natasha, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. You can also leave comments and questions below for me. I'd love to know if your first investment or your planned first investment is going to be where you live or outside of your own market. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at Darren Bowles com with that i'll say natasha thanks so much for joining me i wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey and i look forward to uh, hopefully at some point meeting you in person yes uh, i'm sure we've been in the same circles for many years uh we've been we have, around yeah. a while but uh, never actually totally. met so hopefully at some point we'll get to do that totally thank you so much for having me thanks for being here we appreciate it